Hey guys, it's Mario back with a quick video and in this one we're covering a topic from the realm of bodybuilding nutrition. It's a very controversial one related to consumption of soy protein as a guy. So should men consume soy protein? Is soy protein bad for men? And is it gonna reduce your testosterone level? Is it gonna make you a woman and all these other ridiculous claims that we hear online and in person from bodybuilders? And how much of this is really based on truth? How much of this is just simply mythology as in most cases when it comes to these kind of things coming from the bodybuilding world. So let's look at the facts. And in 2010, there was actually a meta-analysis done on this and just specifically looked at if soy consumption has any negative effects on testosterone. And they haven't found any statistically significant negative effect on testosterone levels in men. And the other thing that we want to look at here is the dose response because there is a dose response and there if, if you overconsume, there might be some negative effects because the study will actually provide you with decent evidence up to a certain limit, right? And then past that limit, that's kind of a gray zone and uh, the limit actually is about 50 to 75 milligrams of phytoestrogen coming from soy per day. And that comes about 25 grams of soy. And up until that limit, we're kind of sure that there's no negative effects on your testosterone. But then again, you know, if you overconsume, we don't necessarily know what's gonna happen. And that's where we wanna resort back a little bit to logical reasoning and say, well, that's the limit. You know, I don't wanna uh, take that chance. I mean, do you want to take that chance? That's the question, because I personally don't want to take that chance. Like even if there's a 1% chance of having some kind of adverse negative effects, I mean, I'm gonna stay away from that and I'm gonna revert back and simply logically look at this, pragmatically look at this and make a decision based on the current evidence, current based of body of evidence that we currently have, to me is saying, well, if you stay within that limit of 20, 25 grams of protein from soy per day, you're good to go. And that's a kind of a thing that we're really looking at this in an extremist way. I know when soy was uh, first found to be good and health beneficial, I mean, even now we know that uh, moderate consumption of soy can help reduce cholesterol levels. I mean, it can help with uh, women and with the, the breast cancer development and can reduce prostate cancer in men. I mean, there's a lot of interesting benefits that can come from soy, but then people hear this and they're like, well, soy is good. A little bit of soy is good, then more must be better. And that turns into consuming a little bit of soy per day into, well, let me eat every single food that has soy in it and also add soy protein powder on top of that. So it's really about moderation. It's really about that dose. You know, dose makes it poison, as they say, and that's specifically with soy. We don't necessarily know what's gonna happen if you just bombard yourself with a ton of soy. And with bodybuilders, I, I think that I, I kind of can resonate with them a little bit because they heard, oh, well, well soy has this fight the estrogen, you know, estrogen is bad, testosterone is good, so must not consume any food that has any sort of quote unquote estrogen in it. Although even the phytoestrogens are common in nuts and in other products as well, you know, this is not just related to soy, but I mean, we kind of tend to have that labeling of foods as good or bad. So soy apparently turned out to be bad in the bodybuilding world. So really it's about that dose. And that's something that I would want you guys to kind of realize that do you want to take that chance? I personally, I mean, I'm staying within that dose. If I go out and have sushi, I'm gonna have some um, soy sauce, I'm gonna have some soybeans, you know. It's every once in a while and that's beneficial. You know, if you stick to that moderation or the golden mean, the middle, you know, even Aristotle talked about this uh, thousands of years ago, you know, he talked about the same thing which applies for us today, is really to stay away from that extremist mindset and not take things to the extreme and really look at the moderation approach and really try to consume a little bit of it and basically enjoy and you don't have to worry if you don't cross that limit at all basically that's what the conclusion of the studies are and that's kind of the conclusion of this video as well i mean there's a dose now you know it your call you know make a judgment call what do you want to do with that if you're a vegan if you're a vegetarian i mean i always recommend consuming a variety of different sources of protein not just rely on one source of protein even though i know it's more convenient just to find one and stick to it and just pile on that. But having a more rich amino acid profile is beneficial for getting your protein when you're not relying too much on animal protein sources. And especially in the case of vegan diet, you definitely have to pay attention to this to get that complete amino acid profile throughout the day. So hope you guys enjoyed this quick video here looking at some of the data and my personal recommendations related to soy consumption. Let me know in the comments below, are you consuming soy on a regular basis? I mean, what's your 
current soy consumption. Just out of curiosity, I'm uh, interested in, to hearing that. Aside from that, what's your opinion on soy? Should you consume soy or not? Based on the evidence that I said in this video, I'm going to link the study in the description below for you guys to check that out. So leave me a comment below. Aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button right in the face to support the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.